So this morning we're going to be covering tips and tricks with your flow hive too and I'm going to start from the bottom of the hive and work our way up and hopefully you'll learn something about the setup of your hive. We've got a lot of people setting up hives at the moment so I want to make sure everybody's aware of the tips and tricks that make things easier. So starting from the base I'll just lift off that brood box. Here we have the screen bottom board. So this is your, your screen bottom board here and inside here is your pest management tray in the bottom here which has actually had a little bit of oil in it already from using it to catch beetles. Now we'll start at the very bottom if you're wanting to get your hive level these legs make it easier and the reason why you want to make your hive level is if you're drawing natural comb then you want the bees to draw it downwards and not cross onto the next frame. So put the level bubble at the top like this and you see that that's almost level there in that position. So if I wanted to get it nice and level I would then lift this side and just adjust the leg like so and you could find you then can get it perfectly level. Lifting the hive and spinning it is usually the easiest way rather than getting out a spanner. So there's a, a good tip. Now when it comes to the vented cover there's two positions so when you're starting the hive and especially if it's a bit cool I'll put the level bubble at the top or the vents at the bottom rather and that means that this here comes into contact with the handle there and limits ventilation. If you turn it up the other way then a lot of ventilation comes up past this handle area and up under your screen. So you've got two positions of ventilation there and if you want to take the tray all the way out then you've got also there's three options there depending on how you want to assist your bees. Now it's a good idea to to screw these all the way in so it holds everything nice and tight like that. If, the, if they're wound out, what you could find is it could be sitting out like that, providing a gap for bees to actually crawl up into that tray area. So you want to make sure it's nice and tight by screwing in your L screws so they're holding things in place. Okay, next, um, with the assembly process, I have seen somebody put this screen the wrong way up. So if you have a look here, it's got a slope and that slope is designed so water sheds out the front if it blows in the entrance of the hive. So you want that slope downwards. If you put it this way up, it'll actually obstruct the bees from getting into the hive and instead they'll go into your tray area, which will really uh, be an issue. So make sure the screen bottom board is that way up with the slope so water is going to flow out of the entrance if it blows in a bit in the rain. And the landing board's also sloped so when you put your landing board on it's sloping downways like that. So there's a few tips on your base setup. We've also got the level in the side here which ideally you want the bubble sitting between the two. So I'll lift a little bit and perfect harvesting level is close to three degrees so having the bubble in the middle will give you that without having to think about it. That's it there. Okay next goes on your brood box. Now it doesn't particularly matter which way you want to start whether you're using foundation in the frames or whether you're using naturally drawn comb with foundationless frames like this but make sure you put the comb guide in the top if you're planning to use foundationless but don't put it in if you want to use foundation sheets. So that's what the bees can use as a guide to hang their comb from and if you've got questions as we go put them in the comments and we're going to answer a lot of questions after I just go through the tips and tricks of putting together your hive and harvesting etc. So next thing 
make sure your frames are squeezed tightly together when you install your bees. Reason being, if you have a big gap like this, the bees will build some random comb in this area. It's a bit of a mess to clean up and that can be, can be a bit annoying, especially if there's brood in that area. So squeeze them together, put the space on the edges. It seems like there's a generous amount on the edges, but you'll appreciate that after a while. What tends to happen is the, the wax builds up on the frames and they end up sitting out and taking up most of that space after some time. Squeeze them together and the spacing will be much better for the bees to draw their natural comb. Next is your excluder. Now, I have seen people put this in the wrong place in the hive. It goes directly on top of your brood nest. If you've got a second brood, it would go on top of the second brood box. So basically what the job of this is, is to keep the queen out of your honey collection area. So the aperture of, these, of this grid here is 4.3 millimeters, which is fine for a worker to get through, but the queen can't get through that and lay eggs in your flow frames. If you are experimenting with no excluder, make sure you, you uh, check that the queen doesn't lay in flow frames. It is very queen specific. One queen will, one queen won't. So that's up to you if you want to experiment without using the excluder. Next, on top of that, or actually one little tip, while you're inspecting your brood nest, you can use the harvesting shelf brackets as a frame rest. And I'll show you how to do that now. It's a case of loosening a couple of these screws and the way you put the bracket on, there's a little keyhole there. Over the keyhole, I find it easiest to put it over, start out wide like that and turn and then you've got a nice tight bracket. If it's not nice and tight, adjust your screw. So this is really neat. As you're inspecting your brood, you can put frames on here and that gives you enough space in your hive to then start working the rest of your frames as you inspect and move them across like this. So you can fit a maximum of three there, which is plenty and it's a really handy little frame rest. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the super. If you've got questions, put them in the comments and we'll get to answering those. Meanwhile, we'll run through a few more tips and tricks we have a lot of people people uh, getting their supers on at the moment and installing their bees, etc. So if you've got any questions, let's see if we can get them answered. Next, uh, I'll take those shelf brackets off because we'll use them for the harvesting shelf as well. If we get your super, I'm going to run through a few tricks. The first one is if you remove the rear door, it makes a very nice handle. So people do often ask, how come there's no handle? It's because there's a really great one as soon as you remove this door. It's nice and generous and makes it easier to lift. If it is full of honey, then they can get quite heavy. If you have issues with your back, then get someone to help you, especially with the larger size hive. Next uh, thing we want to do, if you're putting your super on top, and you may have noticed I missed the excluder just then, so we'll put that back in place. Excluder goes on top, and then your flow super. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is make sure your frames are ready for the bees to, to actually use. So let's say, We'll pull out a frame here and perhaps it's been in shipping and it's been the box has been bashed around upside down if you have a look some of the frames you can see right here some of the parts have moved in transport now the bees aren't going to fill these areas where the cells are in open position so you will need to reset the frames ready to go before the bees can use them. And to do that, you simply take out the, the cap. We're going to put the frame back in. And the, the top slot here, put the key in, and all you need to do is turn it like that, and the frame is ready 
for the bees to use. So that's a good, good tip there and an essential thing to do. And make sure you might, don't miss that step. There's a little tongue here. If, um, if the end cell is left up, you'll actually find that you won't be able to put the cap in properly and it'll sit out wide. Now we did that to remind you to close the cells because we found in the beginning when we were, we were inventing the flow hive, we would leave, leave a frame open accidentally and then the bees couldn't use it. So it won't work to remind you about cells in the middle that have moved in transport, but when you go to harvest, it'll remind you to put the key in the top slot and turn it before finishing your harvest and packing up and putting your cap in. So go and do that to each frame, make sure all the cells are pushed towards the bottom. Next thing in your setup, you wanna make sure all the frames are pushed towards the front. Reason being, if you find that some are back and some are forward, you can get issues where frames are overlapping here and even bees might escape. You wanna create a really nice window across here using the end of your flow frames. If you've got questions, put them in the comments. Okay, so what you wanna do is, there's a screw in the end here, which you can adjust and that will just it, make it so there's just a little bit of rattle room but not too much and that'll push the frame towards that direction. If you're doing a lot of these and you don't want to wind out those screws then you can use something like the comb guide or a little stick across here and that will also push them forwards in that direction and do the same job. Okay there's a few, few good tricks there. Now somebody asked a question recently will the bees be harmed when I harvest? So the, the answer is we put a lot, of, a lot of effort, a lot of time and thought into that so that the bees would be safe even if they are down the cells. Obviously it's better to harvest when the cells are full and capped and that way you don't have bees down cells but you can't guarantee that. You might find sections of the comb where there's, there's completely dry areas and there's bees down those cells and when you harvest the, the, um, what can happen is um, the bees can be down the cells and they'll explain what we did to make sure the bees would be okay in that case. So if you have a look here, again, you can see, you can see I'll just put the key in and close these cells off. So looking in this area and it's a little bit hard to see with the camera angles what we've done is we've provided little gaps so the parts don't meet so if a bee's down the cell there and the cell moves then the, there's a wax area you can see a little v-shape there that's left and what that means is if the bee then puts a leg or a wing through that area and you close the frame again when you're finished then there's a gap there for the bees to pull their leg or wing out and at worst they could get stuck in a bit of their own wax the wax that's used to join to complete the cells and the other bees will help her out so that was an important step in making it safe for when the bees are down the cells some great questions so Put them in the comments and we'll get to answering those and meanwhile i'll run through a few more tips and tricks with the hive make sure you put your caps in ants will move into these areas if you don't have the caps the lower caps and the upper caps in place and that can get annoying and a bit of a mess to get those ants out one tip is you can blow some cinnamon powder into those areas if the ants have gotten in there and they're staying put some, they don't really like cinnamon powder, you could blow the ants out, throw some cinnamon in there and once they've all moved out you can then put your cap back in. Another tip for ants is you can use this leg area by putting grease on there or Vaseline on these leg bolts. I'd recommend a white uh, Vaseline rather than a grease just because it doesn't get so messy and that will act as a bit of a barrier and deter ants from climbing 
up these flow hive two leg bolts and onto your hive. However, if you've got foliage touching the hive, it won't work. So you have to clear foliage away. You can see many of these hives have foliage touching them here. You'd have to clear around if you wanted to stop the ants using the foliage as a ladder to get up onto the hive. Okay, next is your inner cover. Now, your inner cover has a plug in it here. So, the reason why we put that there is you can then choose whether bees are able to get into the roof cavity. Now, it can be fun for a while to let the bees build up a whole lot of comb in the roof area, but it's also a bit of a, a, a mess to clean up, so it's up to you. Um, I find I like to put the cap in and keep the bees down, making the honey in here where you can easily harvest it and not have to do the whole comb cleanup. In the beginning it can be nice to collect a bit of honeycomb in that roof area and if the bees are really building up you could take that cap out and experiment with that. You can put uh, a, a Tupperware container or a jar or something over that area and they could fill a more confined space with their natural honeycomb also. When it comes to the roof if you want to, to, if you live in a high rainfall area, a tip is you can coat the underside of the roof as well and also use some sealant in the joins when you assemble the roof. And that will provide a, um, a, a really strong weatherproofing for your hive. Now, when you uh, put your roof together, it's also a good idea, and this is a bit of a a thing that can happen when people are assembling their roof. I've got some nice uh, instructions on how to do this, but you can use the inner cover as a square as you build the perimeter for your shingles to go on. And the way you do that is when it's flat on the table, you, you screw one of these wing screws right in and push this over into the corner to hold square while you put your shingles on. So there's a good tip for roof building to keep it nice and square. Okay. If it's nice and square, it's easier to get your roof on later. Then you've got these wing screws on the side, which will hold your roof on if you're living in a high wind area. They're pretty good, they don't blow off even with them open unless the wind gets really strong, but basically you can screw them in and it'll lock the roof onto your box. Whereas the bees tend to stick the boxes together and they're quite heavy, so the hive itself doesn't really blow apart unless you have a hurricane. Okay, next is the harvesting shelf brackets. And I'll show you how that works now and some tips on putting them together. So. What we designed here is multiple positions for you to put your shelf brackets on. And quite a lot of people ask us, Where, where's my shelf? And the answer is, here it is, it's the rear door. So that becomes your shelf. So there's a, uh, a tip there. Now, you can either, you can connect it here like this, which will give you a nice shelf for for um, putting a smaller jar. Now to to adjust it, so I'm going to pick the same screw on this side here and just wind it out a, a bit like that. And it's easiest if you put the um, logo facing up like that, slide it over the screw and then turn it. So I've made that a little bit too tight. So what I'm going to do is just loosen it off a tiny bit and that should be about right to then turn it into position and you've got a nice tight shelf bracket that when you put your, your door on will become a good shelf for this size jar here. So then once you've chosen your frame to harvest the tube goes in. Now, you see there's a little tongue here. That's an important little design piece. If you have a look in here, it looks like we've just done some poor manufacturing and left a gap at the bottom, but that's actually on purpose. It's called the leak back point where if honey's 
been building up in there or you've harvested and you, you want to pack up and leave the last remaining drips for the bees, there's some little notches on this cap here where the bees can actually fit their tongue up into that area and you can actually watch them licking the last bits of honey and reusing them. So make sure this tongue goes into the bottom when you harvest and that'll clean out the wax they normally put in that leak back point. Now I didn't wind out the screws, so see that movement? So that's the reason why you want to make sure you've adjusted the screws at the back of the frame. If you're going for a larger size shelf, then you can move your shelf brackets down if you want to, to get a whole jar you could um, you could put it right down here and what that would do is give you enough space to harvest a whole frame into a jar. I'll um, just adjust this side as well. If you've got any questions put them in the comments and we'll answer in. There's so many fantastic questions. Don't be afraid to ask. Hopefully myself or someone else can answer. If somebody, if people are asking questions and you know the answer, and put them in the comments, it's fantastic to see the community helping each other. After all, the experienced beekeepers can pass on their knowledge to those new beekeepers, then that's the way we can continue to learn over generations and keep our wonderful hobby of beekeeping going, but also make sure there's enough uh, skills and knowledge to keep our bees that have become such an important part of our agricultural system. So now we have a, a harvesting shelf right down here, which can see a big jar like this, and a two litre jar like this will fit a whole frame. Occasionally overflow, but normally you'll be able to fit a full frame of honey in this jar. And there you go. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments and we'll answer them. Yeah, great, Cedar. Morning, everyone. There's some great questions coming in. Um, Nikki's wanting to know if you've got your gloves on and you're trying to pull out the white tray, any tips? Um, they're finding it a little bit hard trying to grab that tray with their gloves on. Okay. So that's the tray under here that they're talking about. Um, Generally, you'd be servicing that tray when you were um, not pulling apart the hive, I guess. So the idea is you can do that without having to wear too much protection, but obviously it, I would encourage anybody who's concerned to wear their gloves. So let's see if we can work that out. If anybody's got a, got a trick, you could perhaps use your, your tool like this just to get underneath and get the tray out to that area there, then it can slide out. If you don't have your gloves on, then you can just use your, your fingers like that. Great. Great. Um, Will, Will want, wants you to really um, mention, Cedar, I guess how important the brood box is for your flow hive and that it's not just um, about getting honey out of your hive, that it's really important to look after your brood. Absolutely, so our flow frame technology makes the harvesting easier and, and gentle, a gentle process for the bees and it's something that my father and I worked on for a very long time. Of course looking after bees doesn't change, we've built in a few features to make it easier but looking after your bees is the same as any other beehive in the world and you do need to get in there and inspect your hive for pests and disease, make sure you're looking after them. It's only when you learn to look after your bees that then you get the amazing reward of, of harvesting honey. So really important, thank you for your comment. Great, um, Philip, Philip in Houston, Texas. Um, he started his nuke about six weeks ago, checked it last week and have tons of bees and honey. They were all bearding out the front um, of his brood box. So he immediately put the super on. Is there a possibility of maybe putting the super on too early? Or? The, um, the time to put your super on is when all of the frames are full and there's a lot of bees. If you're getting a beard of bees at the frame, then it's a 
probably a, a great sign that you've got a good healthy number of bees. They'll bid for two reasons. One is if there's so many bees that it's too crowded to maintain the ventilation inside the hive. The next one is if it's just really hot, then bees will get out and, and, and get uh, more space in the hive for ventilation, but also make sure that, that they're uh, enjoying that evening air. Typically at the end of the day, you'll get that big uh, bee beard at the front. But it does mean you've got a lot of bees in your hive and a great time to put on your super, give them some more space to work and get them hopefully waxing up the frames, ready to store the honey when the nectar flow comes. So um, there's some more tips around that as well. If um, it's a, it, This is a great topic actually. Um, so I'll just take off the super and let's look at that again. So what you want is, let's say you've installed your, your nuke in here or package. Have a look and make sure that on each frame they've completed their comb first. You don't want to be putting on the super if they haven't actually finished uh, completing those frames, especially in the colder regions. Because what you'll be doing is slowing them down a bit by making it harder for them to keep their hive warm when, when there's so much space but not enough bees to really keep the hive warm. So um, you could have a look at that and if you do notice that they haven't completed all the frames then you could take the super off again depending on how cold the nights are still in your area. Great questions. Seated just on that brood frame um, now that you're in your box, Catherine's asking, can you use foundation sheets for honeycomb or do you have to use the naturally drawn comb? You can certainly use foundation sheets. These frames are built with the holes in the side. You can wax some wire in a conventional way. I used to do a lot of that with all of my hives when I was producing honey um, on, small on small scale commercial beekeeping and uh, I got really sick of it actually and I'm so glad to go to the naturally drawn comb because we don't need to spin these frames in a centrifuge they don't need the wire support and the bees can do which they do a great job of and I believe it has some health benefits one you're not importing wax from other hives into your hive wax should be sterilized if you buy foundation sheets but um, just uh, I like to let the bees do it themselves so they can all, another thing there is they can size the cells how they want so that is said to have a health benefit too if they size the cells exactly the size they want to raise their, their brood. But it does mean a little bit more work in the hive when the hive is first starting because if you dump a package in here you're going to want to check it next week and the week after to make sure they're building straight on the comb guide. So if they start going crossways, you want to catch that early, bend them back onto the comb guide, get, it, get a few nice straight frames and then they'll follow suit from there. Most of the time they, they will hang off the comb guides, but important to do that check. So while it's less work doing your, doing your wax and wiring and putting your foundation and so on, it could be a little bit more work in the hive but I enjoy that process of really watching what your bees are doing and there's a chance there to check as well that your queen's happy and healthy and laying, which is a nice thing to do early on to make sure your hive is set to, um, to keep building and expanding and, and uh, getting to the point where you can put your super on. Troy's, um, he wants to harvest this weekend, but he also wants to add a second uh, brood box what do you recommend, Cedar? Should he harvest first or add the brood box first? If the bees are building up to that point where you're adding a second brood box, then I would certainly be harvesting first because um, it'll, it'll make it easier to lift off your box. You can harvest all the honey and it'll be easier to lift that box off to put your, your brood box on. Having said that, you can just lift it off, put another brood and keep going. It's up to you. If you're a little tip there, if you're doing naturally drawn comb like this with the foundationless frames and this comb guide, then bees like to to do that 
at the bottom of the hive because they tend to, to start at the top of the frame and work their way down. Whereas if you put a box like this on top of another brood box, you might find they'll start and get a very wonky wavy comb and it all turns into a big mess. So if you're going to use naturally drawn comb, then put this below your existing brood box. So what we're talking about there, for those that are new to beekeeping, is adding a whole second brood box. If you're using foundation, it doesn't matter whether it goes above or below. If you're, um, so another thing you can do if you want to mix it up a little bit is take some frames from your bottom box and checkerboard it in the top. So you could have a frame from the new one, a frame from the bottom, new one, like that. And that would give the bees some great guides for them to build straight frames as well and therefore you wouldn't need to uh, um, put the whole box underneath. So there's a, there's a few ideas there. I've uh, got a shout out to Peter Cox. He's one of our Flow Hive ambassadors from hey, South Peter. Australia. He's coming in saying he's having some cold winter mornings and a few days of rain. So hey, Peter. See, so someone was asking the little round caps where you put the tube in on the flow frames, a little bit concerned because it's a bit there's a bit of propolis on it and they're a bit concerned about taking them out and worried about snapping them. Any tips on getting those caps out? Uh, you won't snap them, they're made out of very strong material. So so you can use uh, this point here. I'll just show you that now. Okay. So if if out like that. They're quite strong. You shouldn't break them. If you do, let us know. Okay. Great questions. Keep them coming. Yeah, great one. Here's, an here's another one. Um, the video may have just been interrupted. but Oh no, we're back on. Great. Anne's asking any tips when you're putting your last flow frame back into your super when it's full of bull <laughs> bees. <laughs> She's finding it really, really tight and just curious if there's any hints on adding that um, last flow frame into your super. Okay, that's a great one. Okay, let's cover that now. So you run the frames back in, especially if it's really tight across here. Now, the way I do it, it's important to have all the frames pushed to the front, so that will help if you've got, uh, if you've adjusted the screws at the back here or put a, a shim piece of wood in the back here to stop the frames moving backwards otherwise the frames get all overlapped and it gets all a bit uh, tricky at the front let's just cover removing a frame so you get the chisel end of your tool and you put it underneath this edge here and you lever it up so that's the first thing to do if they're really stuck there's another lever point at the bottom here so you can loosen it up by doing that and that once you've got that up a little bit you can put your hand there, go to the other side using the J end and hook it and lever it out like that. Okay. There we go. That one's been used, this flow frame. So you can see the bees have just started to use this frame. And if you look in that area, you can see I'm starting to wax up the cells and join their wax bridges across the gaps we were talking about earlier. So putting the frame back in, to answer your question, I have to put the front in first like this. Good idea not to have the cover on because you want to watch here to make sure as this area contacts here, you don't squash bees. So what I find it easy easiest to do is start the frame on that angle and then roll it back into the hive. That way you're already between these two frames. And let it drop down and notice as it drops it's now in between the two frames and creating that nice window there. Sometimes if you've been pulling these frames out and manoeuvring them a bit 
you'll need to make some room first. So let's just go through that again. So you might need to get your J tool and just pull them across like this to make sure they're all pulled across, make sure they're all forming a nice window as well. So they're, they're all over at the edge before you start. Then in like this and down. Trying to, trying to keep it forward between the two frames. What happens if it's back a little bit when you start like that and you're not right up against the wood? If you back a little bit like that, it can actually jump behind. If you see this, if you come a little closer, you can see it jumping behind that one and then it gets in a bit of a tangle and can get kind of stuck behind the other one. So that's the reason why we want to start it off sliding down the wood here like that and roll it around and that keeps your spacing as you drop it in. Cedar, with that, you've got the, the flow frame out there, just wondering, a couple of people just wondering, how do you know if those wires are actually tight enough on the flow frame or do they need to be adjusted? So if the wires have gotten loose on your frames, then the, you, they can be adjusted and we've got some videos showing you how to do that. So the bees will wax them down and things, which does help, but let's pick one that's, see that's tight. And this one's actually a bit a bit loose, which it's uh, if they're re if they're both really loose, then what can happen is the frame will bow a bit. The idea of the wires is they're stopping the frame actually as the the weight comes on from the honey, turning into a, a bit of a, a banana shape. So it is good if they're nice and tight. So what you can do, and I'll show you how to do that now. Um, it's nice to be on a bench to do this, but let's see if we can do it right here on top of the hive. Is you can put some twists like you see in the wire to tighten it up. Now, the you could use a, a butter knife works quite well. But let's see how we go with the tool here. And what you're trying to do is get it out of the groove at the front and it's going to be and starting to climb the face there so once you've got it in in that position you're going to need to hold your frame otherwise it'll fall apart so you don't want to let go of this wire in this process work out which way you're going to twist in this case I'm going to be twisting anti-clockwise to get another twist on that wire so I've taken the wire off, I've given it a twist, and now I'm going to put it back on by sliding it over the front again, and moving it down towards the bottom. Now this is where, if you have a butter knife, you can put it in this area and assist that being pulled down into position. And you want to get it down so it clicks into position like that. The same on the other side. And now you've got a tighter wire. The other ends are a little bit different. We have a, an ability to, there's a few notches here, so you can just get your little screwdriver or butter knife under here and jump it up another notch to tighten this bottom one as well. Great questions. Peter's, Peter's asking, is there anything you need to do, Cedar, uh, if you just want to add a, uh, a flow hive super to a standard Langstroth hive? He's talking about a Langstroth brew box. Yep, okay. Is there anything you need to do? The main consideration is the slope of the hive. If you stick a box like this on any normal beehive, the bees will get up there and start filling it, provided there's lots of bees around, lots of bees in your hive and lots of nectar around for those bees to go and get. The, um, but what you can find if you're using a standard bottom board is you can't have the hive tilted back like this or the water will run in and pull inside the hive. So there's a little bit of a consideration there. So what people usually do in that case is either spin it around so they're harvesting on the front side where the bees are, which isn't nearly so fun, 
Um, it can get in quite a mess because all the bees are coming home when you're trying to harvest. Or you can um, just tilt the hive when it's time to harvest. But I find that annoying as well because you're, you, you're going to go through that beautiful harvesting process and instead you end up messing around at the front trying to chock it up and give yourself that harvesting angle that you need to make sure honey's flowing out of the hive. So it is much nicer to have a screen bottom board where you can leave the slope there with that, with that water pooling inside the hive. But nevertheless, you can certainly, certainly do it. You just need to either change the slope of the hive when you go to harvest or harvest at the front side and maintain a slope to the forward direction like a lot of conventional beehives do. Great. So you know, someone's just asking with the landing board there, is it the land, is it what's making it slope basically? So the, the slope is, is in this case the, the legs creating the slope. So the way you adjust it is you get under here and you spin this leg here. And let's have a look at the level on the side. You want the level bubble in the middle and that'll give you your three degree harvesting angle. We did that because we found a lot of people were harvesting with their hive slope in the wrong direction and spilling a lot of honey into their hive. So, so um, this has helped a great deal to make a base that um, has the levels in it. Great, few people interested in that level. Some, I think you might have just done it though, Stone, wanting a side view of the hive to show how much tilt there actually is. So it's about three degrees. You can use an app on your phone if you've got a classic to get your three degree harvesting angle or you could go find level and just come up at the front about uh, 25 millimetres and that'll, around an inch, and that'll give you a three degree slope. Right. Is, there, um, is there any way to collect um, bee pollen from the flow hive cedar? So bee pollen is usually collected by a, a contraption at the entrance of your hive where the bees come in and it brushes the pollen off their legs and it falls into your collection area. We haven't designed the hive to be a, a pollen collection so you'll have to uh, make or, or buy an apparatus for collecting pollen. Now you should only ever collect pollen off part of your entrance because the bees do need that pollen in order to raise their brood and survive. Cedar, can you use a propolis mat, I'm not even sure what that is actually, in a flow hive or can it cause issues with the flow frames? So a propolis mat is, is basically a, a grid that you put in the hive and the bees tend, anything that's got a kind of a gauze style grid, the bees will actually put their propolis on to, to seal it off. Now, if you um, put that on top of your flow frames, I'd recommend just putting a um, what's called an eek or a little riser around here. So put some sticks of wood around here and put your propolis mat on top of that and that way you, you won't be um, gluing your propolis mat right on to the top of your flow frames. So beekeepers who want to collect propolis will use those mats and then go through a process of getting the propolis off the mat and then they put it back into the hive again to collect more propolis. Propolis is that, that firmer, uh, dark brown um, coloured uh, um, stuff that you see bees uh, sealing up the hive with. Some bees uh, produce an enormous amount of propolis. I've got a hive that'll actually get around on the outside of the hive and fill in every screw with propolis for unknown reasons. It's just a genetic thing. Propolis producing bees produce an enormous amount of propolis. And it's a medicinal thing. When I, um, when I find a whole lot of propolis in a hive, I'll usually get a bit and chew on it. It's made from the sap of trees, the resins, and it's quite a medicinal thing. Any advantage, Cedar, to adding an extra brood box before you put your super on? I would recommend putting your super on first in this configuration. Reason being is if you put a brood box on, you, you might find the bees, a second brood, will will spend all the time filling up that second brood and you might miss the season. So if you want to get some action on the flow frames, get them to fill this first and then put your second brood box in place. And that way you're much more likely to get a good harvest from your flow frames. Do you ever need to tie them down, cedar, due to wind or animals or? If, if the, um, 
conditions are getting cyclonic, you might want to tie them down, especially if you're in an area like this where the wind could come straight up the hill. Now our Flow Hive Classics, before we had the, the wing screws on the roof, we used to tie down if the wind was forecast to be 80 kilometres an hour or more. And that's when we'd get the hive roofs uh, getting blown off the hive. So then we went and got the Flow Hive 2 and designed these little wing screws that actually hold that roof on. The rest of your hive, the bees will stick together with their propolis and it's heavy enough that it doesn't tend to blow away. But if you've got cyclones or hurricanes, then tie down your hive as well as everything else you've got. Peter, can we get can you get um, honey like wax out of the flow hive? So you if can. If you're wanting to make things like candles. So you can. One way is if you get this area in the roof, you can collect some natural comb by leaving this out. If you've got a really busy colony, they'll get up into this roof cav cavity and build a whole lot of comb that you can enjoy, crush and strain and get the honey or, or just simply um, cut it up and chew on that honey, collect the wax to, to build candles, etc. The other place you can get, get uh, honeycomb from is in your brood box. Typically the frames on the edge have, have uh, mostly honey and a time when there's no brood in them you can take one of those frames for honeycomb collection and put a new one back in the center area and that way you'll be relieving the bees by giving them a bit more space and they're less likely to swarm in the springtime so that's something nice to do in spring you give your bees some more room and limit their swarming tendencies do you suggest um, cedar, do you think the timber, the western red cedar hive, is, it, is that better for a wet climate or does it not really matter as long as it's sealed? So keeping a hive looking like this, you're always going against nature a bit. Nature wants to turn it grey and eventually um, start decomposing wood when it's outdoors. So the Western red cedar actually has properties that keep your wood looking good for longer. Its natural properties resist molds and they, they, uh, an oil like this will hold up a lot longer on western red cedar than any other wood. So it's a popular choice in North America and it is a, is a wonderful wood. It's nice and light and has that resistant quality and you can keep it looking good like this however you're going to rub in an oil every year or so to keep it looking good like that if, um, if you want a long lasting finish that you don't want to to bother with then you can al always use a standard house paint they're made for outdoors and they um, will provide you many years of lasting um, finish without having to touch it. There's a beautiful hive there with some nice artwork on the side. So if you've got our Aracaria or Polonia hive then we would certainly recommend painting it rather than the oil. Any tips Cedar on condensation in your flow hive? Okay condensation is a naturally occurring thing in hives and the re part of the reason why you'll see it is because you've got windows to actually see that it's there. So sometimes you'll take off this window and you'll see a bit of condensation. And that'll happen when the temperature is low enough for the humid air to start collecting on the cold surfaces. And the windows are less insulated than the wood parts, so you'll find the, the window areas, you'll, you'll see some condensation on them um, and you'll also see it on the inside of your inner cover. The, um, there's sort of arguments as to whether it's good or bad, but in the end if you're getting excessive amounts of moisture and it's really, really wet in your hive, wet bees in the cold isn't a good thing. If you're getting a bit of condensation on the hive surfaces inside, then, then that's okay. The bees will actually use that as a water source. So there's arguments to and fro about whether condensation's good or bad, but if you're getting excessive amounts, then 
check that your, your roof's not letting a whole lot of water into your hive, check that um, you haven't got a tray full of water in the bottom. Sometimes when it rains a lot, you can get driving rain, blowing rain into this tray area. So make sure you tip that water out. If you've got a whole lot of water evaporating there, it'll make for more condensation in the hive. One thing you could try, and let me know how you go, is removing the tray altogether. Provide some sensation to evaporate. Great. Tips on the roof cedar. If, you're, um, if your hive's got a bit maybe swollen through weather, weathering and you, want it, and you need to adjust the roof, you're having problems putting it on, any tips on making that roof go back over your hive again? Okay, the, the, the main reason why a roof can be hard to put on is if it's actually out of square. So um, if it's square, there should be enough room to get it back on. Oh, one thing that can happen actually is, um, ha have a look here, if, if your inner cover's got a bit of water on it and sometimes this swells and the joint pops out the side, that could be one thing you could look at. If that's happening, you could either chisel that off and get it flush again. Um, one tip, if, if that seems to be an issue going forward, you could um, put a sealer on the inner cover as well to stop it swelling and um, making it hard for you to put your roof on. If, you've, if you put your inner cover inside your roof and find that it actually is very out of square, what you'll need to do is take off your shingles and a, a tip here, you can put little matchsticks or twigs down the existing screw holes, snap them off and square your roof up and that way when you go to screw it again, the screw will uh, find a new pathway because the old pathway has the, the matchstick in it. And that's a way you can fix up an out of square roof. Cedar, you mentioned before about um, oiling or painting your hives. A couple of people just wondering, is how do you do that if you've actually, if you're wanting to keep it looking nice, but the, it's full of bees? What's your S tips? So, um, it's a little bit up to you how comfortable you are. And I'd also always say, if you're new to beekeeping, wear your bee suit, get yourself protected, and if you feel uncomfortable, get somebody to help you. Some people have severe allergic reactions to bees and it's really important to keep that in mind when you're working with them. And then I'll say that I'm quite comfortable to put a coat on the hive with the bees in there. And the bees don't seem to mind too much. Um, if you wanted to, to lock your bees in, you can use something like, um, if you get out there really early in the morning, with some steel wool and poke it in the entrance area or anything you've got and then you can do it without the bees actually escaping but um, I find even with the bees coming in and out you can give this a little bit of a rub with some sandpaper and give uh, it a fresh coat and the bees seem to be okay with that. Cedar can you can we add a tray to the classic hive? So we, uh, we are working on that, uh, making the, this base available with the tray. It's very useful for collecting hive beetles and, and also counting mites and things like that. Um, and it's also got the option of the legs. So hopefully you'll see that soon as an option with the tray and the base. Exciting. That'll make a lot of people very happy. <laughs> Trace, <laughs> Trace uh, you might recognise her voice from whenever you phone the Flow Hive HQ and um, it is, is a requested item that we're working on. So Trace will be very happy <laughs> if she can provide it also. Very happy. Cedar, can you ever harvest um, royal jelly from a, from a hive without harming them? If anyone knows the process of harvesting royal jelly, put it in the, the comments below. It's certainly not something that um, I have much experience in. So we've got time for a couple more questions. A couple more, great. Wilson from up on the Gold Coast is just wondering, what's the best way to transfer your bees from a traditional hive to a flow hive in winter? Okay, so that would be basically getting bees out of a conventional hive and putting them into this one. It's um, similar to transfer.
transferring bees into any other box if your box is old and you need to replace it, etc. But basically, um, depending on whether it's a, f a double box or not, um, will will affect what you do. But if it's a single box, all you're doing is taking the frames out of one hive and putting it into this one. What I'd recommend you do is grab your existing one, move it across first, so the bees are geolocated to where you're going to put your new flow hive. Then you're in your bee suit, you've got your smoker, get some help if it's all new and daunting. Transfer those frames, make sure they're nice and in the box. If there's a sizing change, where you're going from a 10 frame Langstroth to this is an eight frame Langstroth size box, then there'll be two frames you need to leave out. And the two frames you should choose are the, are the ones from the edge that just have honey and no brood. So um, you'll take them away and eat that honeycomb um, or crush and strain and put the rest of the frames in here. If you've got a double box, you might need to get a second brood or you might um, like to take a hive split at the same time and turn your double box into two hives. Um, having said that, you probably want to do that when the bees are less hungry. They're quite hungry here at the moment in Australia and um, as winter progresses here we'll actually get some nice flowers and but for most areas um, as we get closer to spring would be the time to to um, split your hive like that. Um, I just have to mention Gavin saying that his bees are absolutely loving the flow hive. They, they're very house and he thinks they're all having midweek parties so <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> no social distancing there. Ah. Dee wants to know when the temperatures drop two to three degrees, do they need to do anything to the hive to keep the bees warm? Bees are amazing at keeping their hive warm. My grandfather had a hive hanging in his tree outside his window. It didn't even have a box around it, it was just a, a, a natural hive hanging on a branch. And that was in Canberra, which is a place that gets very, very cold in, in winter here in Australia. And they stayed there for years. Uh, this, this hive with no box around them at all. So bees are incredibly resourceful, great at keeping themselves warm. Honey is the key thing they need in order to keep warm. They use the energy, they disconnect their wing muscles, they vibrate, and they're able to create heat and st stay warm during those really cold times. You get, um, if you talk to Michael Bush, he'll tell you how he digs his hives out of the snow with an open screen bottom board without even any ventilation blocker here and the bees are fine for the springtime. So other people though, they will insulate their hive in winter, they'll wrap blankets around it and uh, or some kind of panels and want to keep the hive nice and warm. It really depends. Um, on, on your strategy there. Both options are good, but the main thing is to make sure they have enough honey stores to survive. And if they don't, you'll need to feed them in order to give them those stores to survive a long, cold winter. I'm not an expert on long, cold winters because here we are in our win winter solstice. I'm actually getting a bit hot in the sun. <laughs> We're in a subtropical region here. But if you want to know more about wintering flow hives, then um, we do have some, some videos and some material on that. We also have the beekeeper.org, which has experts from all over the world contributing to, to um, uh, the beekeeper.org. It's an online course that we've put together, which um, it's free to try if you want to get in there and have a look. The idea was we would get um, the experts of the world who, who know more about things that we don't hear to share their information and um, help create a high quality um, video course in order to teach you from nothing right through to being quite knowledgeable about bees. So if you want to try that, get in there and have a look at the beekeeper.org. Otherwise, we've got lots of videos on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page um, to, to answer questions. We've also got our forum at honeyflow.com.au, honeyflow.com.
<laughs> confusing myself here. Thank you very much for watching and if you want to let us know what you would like us to cover in a future video, put it in the comments below and we'll answer those questions and hopefully show you what you need to know to get going in this fascinating pursuit. In the end, if we look after the bees, then they'll look after us and also we'll get 